the idea that you have to have some kind of big political unity on the map and that that portrays a golden age, whose golden age? For example, is it even the case, if we're really looking at things fairly and objectively, that we should say, well, there was the Roman Empire in Western Europe, and then that was replaced by the Germanic barbarians who precipitated the Dark Ages. And so we have the Dark Ages of Western Europe when nothing was happening. Well, okay, but on the other hand, you had a localization of authority instead of a centralization far away in some imperial state. If you went back and asked the people which situation was better, are you sure you know what the answer would be? Are you sure that they would say the Roman Empire was better? And when you have those late Roman writers like Sidonius, Apollinaris, um, in the uh, fifth century or so, writing about the, um, uh, you know, how miserable it was that everything was falling apart and some or St. Augustine, for that matter, the city of God. Um, who are they writing for? And what is their social class when they're writing? They're the elite bemoaning their fate. But does that mean that the common people liked having a lot of organized tax collectors around? Or maybe they liked a situation where there was less central authority rather than more. And given that, it's not even sure that having a literary tradition is ultimately a benefit. It's a benefit for historians, but is it a benefit for the people at the time, which is preferable? So it's better to stand back and not be too uh, um, hasty in one's judgment about such things. Um, now, in the Muslim world in the Middle Ages, you had the actual spread of Islam. In the Umayyad times, you had the spread of this large state, but you didn't have the spread of the religion of Islam that much. I showed that it spread in North Africa, and the fact that it spread there realized the caliph's fears because it broke up their empire and ended the Umayyad dynasty. 